All right, we've got this uh, puppy all primed up. And just a quick review, we used the Duplicolor Primer Sealer. Gave it a good shot. Excuse my hands, gentlemen. We've got the... All the photo etch, brass photo etch is covered up, sealed up. This stuff is nice and tight. It, uh, it sticks really well. And it is a very strong enamel. So be prepared for some stink. And I would suggest using it outside. And it does etch smooth plastic. So if you're doing an airplane or something, be prepared to do a little bit of sanding and polishing out for that. But it's worth the step. Alright, let's get some black on. We're going to be using the Stylores on this one with the airbrush. <clears throat> you don't need to wash me airbrushing. It's just shooting color on. So next time you see this, it's going to be all black. Alright, the whole thing done is done in a nice light layer. Full coverage of Vallejo Super Primer. And I gotta tell you guys, I might be getting seeing the light on this stuff. Uh, thinning it down just makes all the difference in the world. It still needs to be cleaned out each time after you need to refill it because it will clog up your airbrush. But wow, you thin it down a little bit, like I said, about. Uh, three to one sprays on fantastic we'll see uh, we'll let it sit overnight here for a few hours and see what it's like for um, for how delicate it is um, I know that this is a fairly delicate primer but uh, I've got a lot of styler res that I need to get rid of but um, yeah, if you're having problems with this stuff, guys, just try a little bit of the Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. It seems to do just a fabulous, fabulous job of helping it, it, helping it uh, spray. So we've let the Vallejo Primer set for a day or two. Now, um, one of the big things I had problems with this stuff is that I had was that it was so fragile. But it still scratches off like crazy like you can take your thumbnail and pretty much wonk it right off so it is fragile just remember that guys and uh, I have noticed though one thing I have noticed to be fair is that when I um, thinned it with the uh, Vallejo Airbrush thinner, it sprayed a lot nicer. So, what are we going to paint this in? Well, German colors were German Tiger tanks were pretty basic. Um, we're going to use this August of 44 MIG number 011 as our base, and the red brown is going to be MIG 014, and the green is going to be the uh, MIG 003. Now, I've never used these before, I've had them sitting in my drawer for a probably a year no maybe not a year a couple of months at least so let's see how they spray all right this stuff is well shaken right out of the bottle at about 22 psi let's see how it does hmm, sprays nice funky funky smell though Much sandier than the normal uh, 344 color, that's for sure. Much, much more washed out. But it covers nice. Yeah, sprays on nice. Okay, so we've uh, doing this one here. Uh, the Nine Panzer Regiment Three Tottenkopf Poland 1944. So you can see it has fairly broad bands of uh, green and brown vertical on the tank so that's what we're gonna try and replicate on this we'll see okay so I lost <laughs> about the last five or six minutes of footage of painting here I didn't hit the record button I thought I did so we've just about got the haul done and this stuff sprays not bad it's uh, like I said when I thought I was recording but I wasn't it sprays kinda like to me but not really 
it sprays pretty nice. I'm, I'm, I'm liking this yellow, yellow top MIG stuff. It, it seems to be pretty darn good. Uh, yes, apparently there's a difference between the yellow and yellow top and the orange top. These have little balls in it and they spray really nice. What I was talking about before uh, when I re didn't actually have the friggin' camera turned on was camouflage patterns. And the fact that a lot of these tanks went out in the field in dark armor yellow. And, uh, it was up to the guys on site to paint these. So, I can't remember where it was or who it was, whether it was on YouTube or whether I was reading something, to put yourself, shrink yourself down to 35th scale and shrink your airbrush down to 35th scale and then go paint one of these big, big buggers, you know. We're only about, the human was only about maybe just slightly above the fenders on these tanks. And your commanding officer said, okay, go paint that. You got an hour and a half, then we're moving out, but go put a camouflage pattern on it. So, how well, how actually well thinned was the paint? How perfect was the, was the camouflage pattern? So, really, in this kind of stuff, there is no right and wrong. So, relax, guys. You know, unless you're trying to say... Unless you end up painting this dark armor yellow, and, or not dark armor, but dark armor gray, and putting it in uh, Poland in 1939, well, yeah, that's historically not accurate. Unless you're doing a, a what-if a what if diorama or something, you know, alternate history. Okay, yeah, that's fine, but then make sure you explain yourself. Always have a backstory as to what's going on with your models. You know, if you don't explain yourself or why you're doing something, then people are going to shoot you down. So uh, there's the hull. Let's get the turret going here. I'm going to turn this off and uh, we'll start working on the turret. So we're getting the brown on. It's a little red to my eyes for what's supposed to be chocolate brown. Yeah, sometimes the make colors I find that they are just a little bit different than what you would normally say get from Vallejo or Tamiya. Um, so we'll run with it. I hope that uh, we can trust them on it. That they're done their they've done their homework. That this is the actual reddish brown that the Germans used. To me, it should be a little bit brown or not so much red. But this red one is not spraying nearly as nice as the uh, green and yellow did which is kind of odd. It just doesn't spray as nice as these other two. So we just about got the hull all done. I can live with that. One of those things like, hmm, I kind of wish I'd just left it overall dark yellow. But once we get the uh, weathering on, we'll carry on. I think we need a little bit of brown right here. There. It does spray not bad. You can get some nice, really nice little uh, detail work in this. Okay, there we go, guys. Uh, first coat of color on this. I will do a little bit of uh, brown on some of the road wheels just to give a little bit of a little bit of color. But that's it. Totally freehand. Totally just eyeballed off of a picture. And you know what? If you do, uh, the more airbrush you do, the more... Honestly, it's, it ain't rocket science. It's kind of simple. All you need is lots of practice. A few things you need is practice. And a little bit of um, confidence. And don't worry if you don't if you f up. Don't matter. It's just a model. Relax. Have fun. That's the most important thing in model building. Relax. Have fun. And do the best job you possibly can, and be happy with your work. So I went looking through um, some of my paints, and I just I, I got the wrong color on here. This this is. This is too primary, so I found um, something that I find is a little bit more realistic in the color, and uh, we'll see what we'll see whether it's going to spray or not. I don't know. Um, some of these, this is orange top, Mig, and we'll see if it'll spray. And no, it's not spraying. 
of course. Okay, let's try something different here. I put a little bit of thinner in it to make it try and spray a little bit better. What uh, now it doesn't want to uh, adhere. So let's just go straight up out of the bottle and uh, and we'll see. This is more of the brown color that we're used to seeing. Oh, yeah, that's better. We're just going to uh, fill in some of this orangey stuff. It just didn't look right to my eye. And remember, I said that things just don't aren't you know there's no right or wrong. Well, sometimes when you have a complete, complete tonal range is completely wrong you know if it's more to the orange than it is to the brown then yeah maybe you can call it as being wrong and if this make if this is mig's idea of what german primer looks like oh boy way too orange So yeah, I'm going to touch up all this orange stuff with the brown and we'll go from there. As you can see now, after I did the chocolate bond, it just overwhelms everything. At least that other color was almost a little bit more sympathetic. It, it blended in better with the other two tones. This uh, chocolate brown is just in your face and like the contrast is huge. But when you look at World War II, you know, when you look at the German tanks of World War II, in black and white, a lot of the contrast was huge, especially if it's not too dusty or dirty. So what I'm going to do now is just going to go back and clean up some of the uh, some of the tan, some of the green, or s some of the light uh, the light dunkelgleb and some of the green, just to give it a little bit more, a little bit sharper definition. All right, there you have it, guys. We went around, uh, went around and just touched up the light, and uh, it was getting a little bit overwhelmed. The dunkelgleb was just getting way overwhelmed with the uh, chocolate brown and the green. So we just lightened that up a bit, made it a little bit more um, balanced, cleaned it up a bit, and I think it looks I think it looks significantly better now. So next step will be uh, sealing and weathering.